Hello everybody, what is going on? In today's video, we are gonna be talking about some basics of layer masking, uh, specifically for landscape photographers. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of how I do the layer masking in my own images, and then kind of talk about uh, how to use layer masks, why they're important, why you wanna use them, and the whole nine yards. We're gonna be doing this in Photoshop, of course, that is what makes Photoshop so powerful, is the ability to use layer masks. So we're gonna jump right in. Um, if you wanna follow along with me, go ahead and just pause the video here, open a photo in Photoshop, and then you can follow along with this maybe on your phone, your iPad, on the screen next to you, whatever you've got. Uh, I do recommend following along and trying these things out on your own just so you can kind of get a feel for doing them on your own. Let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to go right into Photoshop, guys. So the first thing here, I've got a fully edited image. I just want to show you guys a little bit about um, how layer masks work and how I use them. So you can see all of these little things that are connected with this little uh, chain attachment here. These are all layer masks. You can see on nearly every layer, I have a layer mask that I've used and whether I painted on it, I've used this as a luminosity mask. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, um, but I'm using these all the time. So I know that you guys don't know how to use them yet, but I just wanted to show you how important they are to your Photoshop workflow. This is something you absolutely have to learn if you want to use Photoshop. So let's go ahead and talk about how to make these layers. Okay, so I've went ahead and deleted some of those adjustments just so that this is a little bit more of a raw photo for us to work with. And I wanna show you guys how to use these layer masks. Now, first of all, to use a layer mask, you have to have a layer. So when you're in Photoshop, uh, maybe you do or you don't know how to edit your photos, but one of the places that I usually go is down here to my adjustment layers. This has all different kinds of layers that we can make adjustments on. Um, for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna use a curves layer and let that open up. Now you can see this white box right here that is connected with this chain link. This is a layer mask right here. If you've created a layer that doesn't automatically come with a layer mask, you can create one down here. This is the layer mask button, this little rectangle with a circle in it. You just click it to create a layer mask. Now, when we make an adjustment with a layer, let's say for example, on this photo, we want to uh, increase the brightness here on the really dark spots. I'm just gonna go onto my curves layer here. And if you don't know how to use a curves layer, I will post another video link here where you can learn about using curves layers just cause that's not the scope of this video. Um, but I'm just gonna bring this up. Now, you can see it doesn't look very good because my whole image is getting that treatment. So that is where layer masks really come into handy. So what we need to do essentially is this layer mask here, if I press Alt Option on a Mac and then I click, you can see the layer mask is completely white. White means that everything on this layer that you've applied the layer mask to is going to show through. So for example, if I go on this layer, I grab my brush tool with a black brush, and I paint along here, I'm gonna bring up the opacity. You can see now that we have hidden this curves layer, the brightness that I did on this particular spot of the image. You can see it's being a little slow right now. So now I can toggle this and you can see it's not affecting the spot that I painted black. Now that isn't what I wanna do. I actually want to uh, make this the area that you see. So one thing that we can do here is actually hit Command I or Control I on a PC. Now what that does is make our layer mask completely black. You can see now that the layer does not show through at all because it's completely black. And black means that your layer doesn't show through. Now, if we grab our white brush, we can go over here um, and I can click this button to make white the foreground color. The color that's on top is the color you're painting with. The color that's on the bottom is the color that you also have selected, but you're not painting with it. It's called the background color. You can flip between them just like this. And then if you ever get off and you have a weird color going on, you can always hit D on the keyboard, and that is the letter D to bring back black and white, which is always what you wanna use when you're painting on a layer mask. You can't paint color onto a layer mask. So we're gonna go in with a white brush now. I'm gonna click my brush tool up here. If you don't see the brush tool on your toolbar here, hit B on the keyboard, that'll bring up the brush tool. And we can adjust the settings of our brush. Now for landscape photography, usually you wanna be using a hardness of 0%. That way the brush is really soft. I'll show you guys an example here with hardness. You can see how soft it is around the edges. Now if I was to bring up the hardness to 100%, you can see it's very, very hard. The edges are not feathered. And for landscape photography, we usually want things to be feathered. So I usually leave it at zero or below 50 at least. Now, 
I can go in on this layer mask here with my white brush at 100%, and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush. You can do this up here by clicking and dragging. I prefer to actually just look at the image and use the brackets. Uh, right diagonal to the delete key, you've got the open and closing bracket. You can use those two to change the size of your brush on the fly. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna paint that in right around there. And now you can see that when we toggle this, it's kind of bleeding out onto the edge and it's really obvious. So what you can do if you wanna clean it up is switch to black. I can make this a little bit smaller and then I can just go in and clean this up around the edges. There is a lot better ways to do this, but when you're a beginner, this is probably the best and most easy way to do it. Uh, as you advance, you will learn some more advanced techniques that you can do. Also, uh, if you want to adjust this layer because you feel like it's becoming too bright, the cool thing about doing this in Photoshop is now I can go back in and adjust this, and it's only going to adjust what's white on the layer mask. So remember, on a layer mask, um, white reveals, black conceals. So anything that's black doesn't show, anything that's white does show. Now another really cool thing here is that it doesn't just have to be black or white. If I was to paint with a 50% opacity here, and I was to paint black on top of my white, you can see it's going to paint like 50% gray. That is going to make it so that the uh, adjustment shows halfway through. So you can use this, you can imagine, in many different ways. For example, if we wanted to use this same layer but increase the brightness over here, um, so let's say I went to 100% opacity, I brought this up and I said, well, that's way too bright. So I'm going to press Command-Z to undo that. I'm going to go down. We're going to bring the opacity to maybe 40%, and we're going to just pass over maybe twice. Now you can see we've got something in the middle here. So it's not white, but it's not black, it's in the middle. So only part of this adjustment is showing through. This is really what makes this powerful for landscape photographers. Because we're out shooting landscapes, trees, rocks, things that are not uh, perfectly shaped, such as architecture, we want to use really, really soft brushes and we want to kind of feather in that adjustment at 10, 15, 20, maybe even 5% opacity with the brush and just paint over many, many, many times to make it look as seamless and realistic as possible. And if you're ever out here painting and you notice that for some reason it won't let you paint or you've got this little icon, this little slash like I have on my screen, make sure that you are selected onto the layer mask. You'll notice by these little bars here if you're on the mask or not. So you can see that does a lot of different stuff for us. We can do that with any layer. Let's say for example a hue saturation layer. Uh, I'm going to bring up the hue and saturation and I like what that's doing to most of my image, but I feel like it's making this rock over here just a little too saturated. So what I can do is go in with a black brush here. Again, we're gonna go at about 2000 pixels on the size, 0% hardness, and let's lower the opacity to 20%. This is a lot of times how I'm painting on my image. You can see every time I'm passing through, I'm clicking again just to kind of feather this out. Rather than using just one adjustment at 100%, I'm clicking and dragging to make it even more feathered. You can see as I do this, it gets darker and darker. And now you can see that the saturation isn't really affecting this part of the image. So you can go and do this as many times as you want. Most of the time, like I said, I'm at 10% or lower when I'm doing these kind of things because I want to make it as feathered as possible. A lot of times I'll make my brush smaller and I'll just go in and paint all over the image. This is really what makes Photoshop powerful is your ability to do this on all different kinds of layers. Now you also have some options in the layer mask up here. You've got options for density, feather, and then you've got some refined tools. Don't worry too much about the refined tools right now. You can worry about those later. But let's talk about density and feather. So what the density does, we'll go ahead and preview this layer mask here by Alt Option clicking. And what density does is as I lower that, essentially it's going to make all of the blacks a lower percentage. So if you wanted it to apply to the whole thing, but you only wanted 10% to apply. You would want 90% density, and then you could go in and paint white on other spots of the photo. This isn't a tool that I'm using all too much, but do give it a try and see how it works and how it will apply to the whole image. Now you can see I'm barely affecting the whole image because the density is at 90%. As I continue to bring it up, if I go all the way to 0% density, you can see the layer mask is completely white. So that is what density does. And then what feather does is it just further feathers your selection. Now, if you've used a brush, you probably don't need to feather it anymore, but this is always con worth considering. Uh, if it does appear a little too harsh, you can always add some more feather. 
So those two things will help you a little bit. Now, if a lot of you guys are probably in here and you wanna make a selection that's a little bit too hard to do with a brush because you would spend hours, there is an easier way. Let's go ahead and make another curves layer here. And I just wanna make a selection of the sky. So one of my favorite tools for this, one of the more beginner tools is the quick selection tool. You can hit W to bring it up if you can't find it in the menu. Essentially what this quick selection tool does is when you click and drag, it will make a selection. And you can see that it's snapping to the edges. So the way the quick selection tool works is that it uses contrast to guess, contrast and color to guess what you wanna select. You can see it's done a really nice job here just because there's so much contrast between the foreground rocks and the background sky. Now what you can do to apply it to a layer, usually you actually want to make the selection before you make the layer because then when you make a layer, you'll see it automatically applies to that new layer. And now when I adjust the curves layer, it will only adjust the sky. So you can see just like that, we've made a really simple selection of just the sky. And for this, maybe I wanna bring it down because I feel like the sky is too bright and I can just do that super easy. This is where the density comes in handy here. You can go on to here, drop the density to make it apply a little bit to the foreground if you wanted to darken the foreground as well. So using this quick selection tool is really, really helpful to make adjustments like that where there's a lot of contrast and Photoshop can do a pretty good job. You can apply it right to your layer mask there. And again, remember that black conceals, white reveals. Now I want you to remember that you can use a layer mask on literally almost any layer in Photoshop, whatever you're doing. So what I recommend you doing after checking out this video, if you still don't know how to edit in Photoshop, go watch another tutorial video where you can learn how to edit your images in Photoshop. Maybe there's particular effects that you want to apply or you want to paint on a blank layer, and then you can apply using these layer masks, what you've just learned in this video, to those techniques and combine them together. Layer masks are really what makes Photoshop super, super powerful. Like I said, you can apply them to literally any layer that you want. In these examples, you just saw me apply them to some of the most basic things like hue, saturation, and curves. But like I said, possibilities are endless. Uh, some other common things that I like to use in Photoshop are Orton effects, uh, some sharpening layers, adding some pop, adding a vignette. And, and all of these times, I'm going to be using layer masks on a lot of those. So let's go ahead and jump back in and look briefly at some of the layers that I used on my fully edited photo uh, with some of my more advanced layer masking techniques that you guys can check out and things that you can look to work towards or build forward to. So here we are again on my fully edited photo. I wanna show you guys what some of these um, layer masks do and some of the more advanced techniques. The first thing I wanna show you is this blacks layer where I brought up the darkest spots in the image. And I will preview this layer mask. So you can see this actually looks like my photo, but what it actually is is a layer mask. This is called the luminosity mask. We're not gonna be covering how to make them in this video because it is an advanced technique. But if you wanna learn more about luminosity masks, there's plenty of great videos online and I'm more than happy to teach you if you wanna come out to a workshop of mine. But essentially what a luminosity mask does is it takes the brightness values in the image and converts it to a mask. So in this mask, I particularly selected the dark spots in the image. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So these white spots are going to be receiving more of this layer mask, which is a curves layer that I brought up the brightness and you can see that that has made it brighter. Now I'm still using basic layer masks. You can see right here, I put an additional layer mask. I stacked these two together because I just wanted to affect this area of the frame. So this one I've just done with a brush. So I'm using all different kinds of layer masks. You can see this again here is a luminosity mask. This one's the opposite where I selected the brights instead of the darks and I brought those bright spots down. So tons of different things you can do with a layer mask. Landscape photographers are using luminosity masks all the time, every single day to make their images better. But before you learn luminosity masking, you have to understand how to use basic layer masking. You have to understand the concept of black conceals and white reveals. You have to understand how to use the density slider and don't worry too much about the feather slider. I mean, I'm not using either of these very much, but it is helpful to know about the density slider. Hopefully that helps you guys to understand basic luminosity masks for landscape photographers. Like I said, some specific things that landscape photographers are doing is adjusting things uh, in very, very small proportions at a time. We're using large feathers, low opacities, and just brushing things in really smoothly uh, on all different kinds of layers. So whatever kind of the layers you use in Photoshop to edit your photos, you can use a layer mask on. 
Thanks so much for checking out this video, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. As always, appreciate your subscribe, your comment, your like, uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys next weekend. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.